If you are here with your Bible, can you raise up the Bible? Of the word, it will really help you to go up. You can understand what I'm saying. Therefore, we'll keep quiet and go through the word so that the blessing of the word will be upon every one of us in Jesus. I have a dream, a vision, the goal, the aim, the purpose. One million young people. Praise the Lord. And we can do it together. How many of you did some little mathematics? Where are you? Okay, okay. Stay there, stay there, stay there. If I have 1,000 young people here, one, two, three, four, five, you are there. If you commit yourself to the Lord and you said the first month after this program, you'll win just one young person to the Lord. Just one. Just one. Everybody say just one. With 1,000 winning one, one, one will win 1,000 others. So, in one month, we'll win, we'll all together be 2,000. The following month, second month now, these 2,000, you commit yourself, whether those young people are in the church, in your class, in your school, in your neighborhood, one, one, one. 2,000 will win 2,000. Will become 4,000. Third month, then you'll have 4,000 times 2, 8. Next month, 16,000. Next month, next month, next month, 128,000. Next month, 256. Next month, next month. We are there. And we can do it together. I said we can do it together. If you want to join your heart, your head, your hand, your personality with me and say, we're going to win this country to the Lord, where are you? Father, in the name of Jesus. I look up to you at this time. Lord, we pray that you'll do great things in the lives of these young people in Jesus' name. Lord, we claim this country for Jesus. All these young people here, boys and girls, we claim them for the Lord in Jesus' name. And I'm praying that you do a great transformation work in their hearts. And I pray that this will be a turning point in every life in Jesus' name. Take us to the top. A bright life. A bright future. A bright country. A bright church. We'll feel it in every life, Lord. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down now. We're looking at Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. I'm going to read three verses of scriptures to you in Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, open your Bible. The first verse is verse 11. Verse 11. It says, And he said, A certain man had two sons. A certain man had two sons. Here the Lord Jesus Christ was teaching the people. And he wanted to show that the whole world is divided into two. Two sons. The whole community divided into two. Two sons. And even the whole church divided into two. Two sons. And as we're here, you are either here or there. Either the first or the second. Either the second or the first. Two sons. He had two sons. Let's see what eventually happened to the first one. Verse 22. But the father said to his servants, 
bring forth the best robes and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. That's what eventually happened to the younger one. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, here is what happened to the older one. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. If you, if you took those two verses of scripture, and you understand that all of us here were divided into two, you are either the first one or the second one. The first one is said, he came back home and he said, bring the very best. The best is waiting for you this year. Yeah. And then he told the second one, he said, all that I have is thine. That's abundance. Abundance is waiting for you this year. Yeah. You might be number one. You might be number two. Whether you are one or two, there's a great future ahead of you. Yeah. And there's something great and something mighty and marvelous waiting for every one of us in Jesus' name. But now, now, I'm going to tell you the story. As you look at the story, you'll find that the first one we spoke about, even though the bears came eventually, everything had not been quite good and quite normal and quite favorable. You look at your life, you look at your past, you say, I see I made disappointment to myself. I see I made some mistakes. I see I have committed some sins. I see I'm like a prodigal daughter. I'm like a prodigal son. I see I'm like a prodigal student. I've not done well. I want to tell you that we're going to take this life of yours that has not been very good. It's going to be the very best in Jesus' name. And then you see the other one. The other one is the one that stayed at home and came to church and did everything that was ought to be done. He was, he was quite a good boy, a good girl. Everything was all right. But then he had a complaint. He said, I've been here all the time. And yet you never give me this or never give me. I never got anything. Maybe you are there. You say, I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I've been coming all the time. But when I'm sick, I pray I never get answered. And when I need more, I pray and nothing ever happens. They say that there are miracles and testimonies and nothing good ever happens to me and yet I'm doing my very best. We're going to change that. Something is going to happen to you. If your prayers have never been answered, the prayers are going to be answered in Jesus' name. It's like, no miracle, there's no power, there's no prosperity, there's nothing, but today there is something. Say, there is something. Something is waiting for me. You'll have it in Jesus' name. Do you have a pen to write there? Okay, I'm talking on enjoying God's best. Enjoying God's best and a brilliant future. Enjoying God's best and a brilliant future. I'm going to divide the message to three parts. Number one is the pitiable representation of a corrupted youth. I want to show you that this youth we're talking about now, although he eventually ended up well, but when he started, he had been corrupted. You can tell from the story I'm reading from verse 22. Verse 22 in the, that's Luke chapter, Luke chapter 15. Look at verse 22. Here is what happened eventually. In verse 22, but the father said unto his servants, bring forth the best robes. For who? I said, for who? The best is waiting for you. And put it on him. And put a ring on his hand. And shoes on his feet. That's where he ended up. Let me show you the very beginning. And see this a child, this boy, or might even be a girl. Let's look at verse 12 now. And the younger of them said unto his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Here was a young man, a boy, just like you, just like many of us. 
that went to the father and said, I'm fed up with this control at home, commandments at home, authority at home, don't do this, don't do that, read your Bible, pray and get up and do that. I'm fed up with that. Give me whatever belongs to me, I want to go. And then eventually the father after pleading and the, and the child will not budge. And the child will not answer. And the child will not give a good response. He divided everything and then said, that's yours. And then he left. And he went to a far country where nobody could reach him or touch him or talk to him or counsel him or control him or instruct him. And then there he wasted all he had with riotous living. Criminal life, sinful life, bad habits. And then it says in verse 14, and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine, a mighty want, a great need in that land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself unto a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his field to feed swine. And he would he would fain have filled his belly with husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. That's the story of this pitiable representation of a corrupted youth. When I say representation, you know, represent, representing, representation. That means this child is like an example of many, many young people today corrupted in their ways. And as I look at the story of this child, this is what I see. Number one is self-centeredness. Self-centeredness. Just me. I don't care whether daddy is happy or not. Just me. I don't care whether mommy is so right with this or not. Just me. I don't care whether other people think this is right or this is wrong. Just me. I'm going to have my way. I'm going to go my way. I'm going to do my own thing. If I want to smoke, I don't want anybody telling me smoking is bad. If I want to drink, don't tell me drinking is bad. I just want to go my own way. And I want to go to a far place where nobody will see me or touch me or, or turn me around, I will be myself. I'll be my own controller. I'll be the captain of my ship. I'll be the controller of my life. Number one, tell me selfishness. Self selfishness, self-centeredness, all the same. Number two now is stubbornness. You know, the father said, how could you do this? Don't do that. He said, but I will. This will break your mommy's heart. I don't care whether mommy's heart is broken or not. This is what I'm going to do. And he just did what he wanted to do. He was sowing his wild oats. But you know, it is what we sow. We're going to reap. If we sow bad habits, we're going to reap a bad fruit. If we sow bad character, we're going to reap bad fruit. If we sow bad behavior, we're going to reap something. And you see, that's what happened to the child. I pray that it will be reversed in your life today in Jesus' name. Number one, I see self-centeredness. You know, if we're going to make it in life, we must take that self and put it at the background and bury that self and let the life of Christ resurrect in us. When you repent, that is going to happen. When you say, Lord, I, I say, is there anybody who has never been selfish? Of course we've been selfish. I just want to go my own way, do my own thing, say my own thing. I want whatever will give me pleasure. That's what I want. I don't care whether it gives other people pain or not. Number one is selfishness. Number two is stubbornness. Number three is separation. He just separated himself. I'm by myself now. Good morning. No answer. What are you going to do today? No answer. I'm far away. You know some, some young people, they have not really traveled out very far, but in their mind, they have traveled out. In the relationship, they have traveled out. They are not in communication with anybody. You cannot reach them. You, can, you don't know what's in their mind. They keep everything, their thoughts, their plan, their friendship, their letters, their email, their whatever. They keep everything to themselves. Although you can see them in the physical, you cannot see them. You cannot really touch them. They're not near. They're near, but they're far away. And it is their separation. They separate themselves from the light. They separate themselves 
themselves from the suction of their parents. They separate themselves from the church. They separate from everything that is good. You cannot really touch them. And they do not know that when they do that, in their mind, they are traveling to the far country. And there's a famine in the far country. There's poverty in the far country. There's suffering in the far country. And today, I'm bringing you back. That you will say, no, I'm going to get back. And I'm going to get back to the source of abundance and to the source of my blessing and prosperity in every way. will be waiting for you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number four, social sins. You see, when he got to the far country, he said, uh-huh, now I am here by myself. And there's no instruction now. There's no control now. There's nobody to say, according to chapter such and verse such, this is right and this is right. I don't care what is right, what is wrong. I just want to enjoy my life. If smoking brings enjoyment, I enjoy. If drinking brings enjoyment, I enjoy. If uh, joining a gang brings enjoyment, I join a gang. If occultism brings enjoyment, whatever it is, I just, I just let go. I let loose. And the life became loosened. All the buttons in the life, they're loose. All the zip in the, in the, in the life, they're loose, loosened up. Everything, every control is loosened up. And then he went into all these social sins. What I'm saying, social sins, the sins of society. Whatever they're doing, they, you are now at Rome, do like the Romans do. You are in Babylon, do like Babylonians do. Or you are in Cal, you are in Chaldeans, all of the Chaldeans, do like the Chaldeans do. Whatever it is, you are in Egypt, do like the Egyptians do. And this is what happened to this child, the sins of society, took over his life. And eventually, he came into what I call number five now, slavery, slavery. You know, the, the liberty he had at home, the liberty was no more there. Then he joined himself to somebody in the land and when he got to the place the work he will not do at home he was supposed to do that now it was slavery you see many people that get into all these sins of society they do not know eventually to enslave them and when somebody becomes a slave at the age of 10 terrible at the age of 17, you become a slave. At the age of 20, you become a slave. And it is very terrible. I learned of a particular experiment some scientists performed. You know, it was an elephant. This elephant was, you know, when it was uh, given birth to, you know, how many of you have seen pictures of elephants before? Can I see your hand? Wonderful. Good boys and girls, say I'm good. Say I'm good. Now, you see, all that when it was born, what they did was to make, bring a brick chain. And then they tied it upon the leg. And then they tied it upon the pole. But you see, that elephant did not know that was slavery. Because the elephant, no, you, because the rope was a little bit long, you could you know, move like this and move like this and move like this and all that. And if you have done some real, some mathematics and you know what you know I'm talking about, you can actually when well, you draw the lines, all the lines like that, it's almost like you can draw a hundred lines from the center to the circumference. Are you following after me? Okay. And then so because that thing can move like this and then like this, like this, it says. This is liberty. He didn't understand that that circle was very small. And there's a wide world outside there. And then you have this little circle. And because you can actually go around a hundred times, and then you can go this way a thousand times, you thought you had liberty. But it was real slavery there. And eventually, as the elephant was growing up, they removed the chain and just put a little thread. But the elephant now, it was no more the chain imprisoning the elephant. It was the habit. Because it's been like that for a long time. Therefore, it's like this is my place. And when you are like that in your life, that it may be a little sin, a little stick of cigarette that binds you. It may be a little, a little habit that binds you. As you are young, when you, are getting, when you get much, much older, nobody controls you anymore, but that habit will now be controlling you. That's why I'm going to break that thing out of your life. That habit that is binding, and you don't know that you don't have liberty because of the many lines you are following within that small circle. And I'm going to release you to success in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now we're going to do some review. You know, when I when I study, I read, I review, I recite, 
I rewrite, I recite. You know, oh, that, that's how you remember things. Sometimes some young people, they wonder, the pastor, you said that before. Are you forgetting? Your, no, I'm doing revision. I'm doing review. When I, I read, I revise, I review, I rewrite, I do all that. That's what makes me to be able to remember. Number one now is self-centeredness. Number two, tell me. Stubbornness. Number three, tell me. Separation. Number four, tell me. That's social sins, society sins. Number five, again. Number six, suffering. Suffering. Now he began to suffer. No food to eat. If I were at home, I'll be able to eat, you know, and even have enough to spare. But now there is suffering. That is what sin leads to. You see, when you have sin, eventually there'll be suffering. There'll be slavery. And that's why we bring salvation to you. And we say, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you want to be born again and you want to get saved, raise up your hand. Some young people, they don't understand. They don't understand. They say, uh -huh. they want me to join their church. They want me to do this. No, we want you to be free. You are going to be free. And when I talk about freedom, I'm talking about freedom to succeed. And freedom to climb up. And you see, when you're trying to climb a ladder and there's a big load at your back, I'm saying, can I help you and take away the big load at your back so that you'll be free to climb? Because this year you are going to climb. Yeah. I said, this year you are going to climb. Anybody climbing this year? Where are you? Anybody climbing this year? Where are you? That's what I'm telling you. Let's all this load at your back and the load of condemnation, the load of guilt, and the load of oppression. We're going to take it away, and then I say, I release you to success. Yeah. And then you will succeed in Jesus' name. Yeah. And eventually, number seven is shame and sorrow. Shame and sorrow. Eventually, when he got there, look at the shame and look at the place where the child was now. That's why then he, he turned and said, this thing will change. This life will change. What I said, I will not do before I said I will not leave, but I'm going back home. I'm going back home. I'm going back to my father. And he got back and something good happened unto him. As you come back, something good will happen to you in Jesus' name. I now come to number two. Number two is the practical restoration of a converted youth. The practical, uh, the practical, what? Restoration, restoration of a converted youth. You know, look at verse, uh, uh, verse uh, the next verse here is verse 17. Verse 17. Everybody say verse 17. Look at it now. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. Uh, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. Can you say that with me? I will arise and go to my father. Say that again. I will arise and go to my father. Say that once more. I will arise and go to my father. I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. That's what I like about this boy. You know, he said, I will arise and go. And he arose and he went. I will arise and go. And he arose and he went. Some people have good intention, but there's no action. Every time they say, I will arise and go. Good intention. I will arise and go. Good intention. I will arise and go. Good intention. First of February is gone. I will arise and go. Good intention. There's no action. And then second of February has come. I will arise and go. And I'm saying, you've been saying that how long now? Get up and do it. I'm going to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a good intention. Action. Get up and do it. I'm going to get saved. That's good intention. Get up and do it. I'm going to be serious this year. I'm going to be a good girl, a good boy this year. Get up and do it. I'm going to so serve the Lord. Everything I've read in the Bible, mommy taught me, daddy taught me, pastors taught me, everybody taught me. I'm going to do it this year. Get up and do it. He had a good intention, but he followed it up with action. It is intention plus action that is equal to achievement. Say that with me. Intention plus action equals 
achievement. If we're going to achieve, we must join that intention with action. I've read the story to you of the next stage of this boy now. I'm going to, let, I'm going to go through again. Number one is realization. Realization. He realized this place I'm, I am now is not the best for me. I'm cut out for something greater than this. I should be higher than where I am. What am I doing here? This is not my place. It is that realization that brings a person to begin to say, I must do something. This year will be different. And as I'm looking at you for you, this year will be different. Yeah. I said this year will be different. Yeah. Actually, I came for you. And I'm going to take you out of that dungeon. We're going to go to the mountain together. And I can, sh I can show you, you know, if, if you are going to a particular place and somebody had been there before, that fellow can take hold of your hand like this. Let's go. I'll take you there. And that top, I've been there. I'll take you there. But it starts with number one, tell me. Realization number two, resolution. Resolution. No, he said, I will arise and go. Immediately he realized that this place is not my place. This is not good for me. Then he had this resolution, and then we have recognition. Recognition. He said, I recognize where I ought to be. I recognize where I should have been. Many hired servants of my fathers, they have enough to eat. I'm perishing with hunger here. This will not be. And then number four is repentance. He repented. He said, I've done something wrong. I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no more worthy to be called your son. And then he returned. I will return. I said, I will return. Can you say that? I will return. Can you say that? I will return. Look up here. Look up here. You know, sometimes I just, you know, when you are very, as you are very young, you just put your books, all oh, this reading, reading, reading. I'm fed up. Then you dump your books there. And then you go to the field. And now it's all football and kicking this and kicking that. You even forgot to come back home. You slept outside. And mommy will say, where is my boy? Where is my boy? Where is my daughter? And then you didn't care for anything. And your books are all there. You've forgotten them. Eventually you'll say, what am I doing here? Mommy is at home. My books are over there. My brothers and sisters are over there. Everybody is thoughtful because of me. Why this? And then you say, I will return. I said, I will return. I will return. Something, something good is waiting for you. Something marvelous is waiting for you. And when you return, then you pick up those books again. Then you embrace your mommy. You embrace your daddy. You say, Daddy, I'm sorry for everything. And then a father who's in heaven, you say, Father, I'm sorry. And the moment you say you're sorry, everything is forgiven and forgotten. Every sin you ever committed in your life, the moment you tell the Lord you're sorry, they'll be forgiven in Jesus' name. And then I have a big word now. I don't know whether I can catch it, but you know, one way, when I think I thought, when I was uh, preparing the message for you, I said he may not understand this. Then I told myself, we learn by hearing new words. I said we learn by hearing new words. Do you accept that? You know, then there was a time you didn't even know any vocabulary at all. You didn't know go or come up or down. But the first time you heard it up. What does that mean? Stand up, stand up, stand up. And then you saw that people stand up. Okay, what it means is that if you're being like this, then you do it like this, I'm standing up. Am I right? And then when they say the next time, then you understand. My next word is regeneration. 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 Everybody say regeneration. Uh, have you, do you know what we call generator? How many of you know generator? What does it do? I said, what does it do? You know, when they turn on that scene and everywhere has been dark and say let somebody go and put the generator over there and then they go to put it and they say boom 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 and then all of a sudden everywhere is bright and when you are regenerated it's like a new generator coming into your life yeah. it will generate success and power and light and enthusiasm excitement regeneration everybody say regeneration Heaven is going to generate power in your life. Yeah. Authority in your life. 
And if you are sick, there is a regeneration here today. Healing will be generated in Jesus' name. You know, when you are born again, you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is regeneration. There is a new life coming your way in Jesus' name. Number six is reconciliation between this boy and the father. This boy and the family. Reconciliation. No hatred anymore. No separation anymore. Now we're together. And then he came back home and now they're all together. And then the father said something surprising. He said, this my son was dead. But now is, tell me, tell me. It's now alive. I call that resurrection. Resurrection. You will rise up today. Yeah. I said you will rise up today. Yeah. Nobody will bury your talent. Yeah. That talent will rise up. Yeah. Nobody will bury your gift. That gift will rise up. Yeah. Every good thing in you. Every, every kind of power that has been buried. It is today. Everything will rise up in Jesus name. Yeah. Because he came back. Because he came back. That's why all these things happened. Before I go on, we're, we're going to review that again. Number one, realization. Number two, resolution. Number three, recognition. Number four, repentance and return. Number five, regeneration. That's my word. I say that is my word. Is that your word? Regeneration. Power generated in your life in Jesus' name. Number six, number seven, resurrection. Now, we, 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 you, that boy has got the best. I'm not going to talk about uh, the senior boy. Look at the senior boy now. I'm looking at profitable revelation for a committed youth. Number three is profitable revelation for a committed youth. Looks like I have some committed youths here today. What are they? Oh, I see you now. Yeah. Praise the Lord, you are committed. Yeah. I said, praise the Lord, you are committed. Yeah. Uh, let, 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 let's think about this boy. I'm looking at him from verse 25. No, verse 25, it says, now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing, rejoicing. And he called one of the servants and asked, what these things meant. In verse 27, And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father has killed the fatted calf, and because he has received him safe and sound. And he was angry. And he would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entreated him, and he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. And as soon as this thy son was come, which has devout thy living, and with halots, Thou hast killed him, the fatted calf. Look at verse 31. And he said, the father said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me. Thou art ever with me. Thou art ever with me. Tell me the rest of that verse. Tell me very well. Tell me that again. And all that I have is that. And remember, it's a picture of the Heavenly Father God talking to us who are converted, consecrated, and committed unto him. And we didn't know that. And this boy was there all the time. And he said, I've been dutiful. I've been faithful. I've been loyal. I've been consecrated. I've been committed. And I've been here with you every time. You never did this for me. He never prayed. He never asked anything from God. He just felt that if God knows I need it, he'll give it to me. And let me go over this one now. Number one, anxiety. Anxiety. He was coming back 
from the farm. And then he became anxious and apprehensive. And he said, oh, what's happening at home? What's happening at home? This anxiety. Then he called one of the people and he, and he said, it's your brother that came back. He said, watch. After anxiety, then you have anger. He became angry because he was now comparing. He said, ah, this boy has gone. Now he came back and you're giving me all this. What am I going to have? You know, sometimes we are afraid because we don't think. I think that, you know, somebody has been sick. And when the fellow was sick, he was not breathing very well. Now he's getting better. And now he's breathing very well. If I don't understand, I'll think because his breathing is taking in some oxygen. Therefore, that may deplete or decrease the amount of oxygen I have. But no, no matter how much amount of oxygen he takes in, I still have complete oxygen to take in for myself. Or we go to the riverside and I'm, and I'm surprised. Look at this fellow. He brought a big bucket, a big pail, and then he drew the water. And I'm afraid, would I get enough water because he is taking some water? No matter how many buckets of water he takes, I still have enough water in there. That's why we should not be jealous of another person. But he was ignorant. He didn't understand. He thought, since all this is going to this, my younger brother, what is left for me? That's why the father said, look, all the air is available for you to breathe. Look, all the ground is solid for you to run on. Look, all the mountains are high enough for you to climb. Look, all the fruits are there for you to take. Look, all the success is still there for you. All that I have is yours. And tonight, all is yours. Amen. Salvation is yours. Amen. Holiness is yours. Amen. Healing is yours. Deliverance is yours. You know, that other person will get miracle. Praise the Lord. His miracle does not hinder my miracle. That other person is going to succeed. Praise the Lord. His success will not hinder your success. The younger fellow has come and the best robe has been given to him. Praise the Lord. But all that the other people have will not hinder your blessing. You too, you will have your blessing in Jesus' name. Number three, accusation. Accusation. The young man began to accuse the father. I've been with you all this time, and you have not given me this or given me that. Number four is attitude. <clears throat> attitude. Bad attitude. Will not go home because of that. Will not enter because of that. And the father had to come to him. You know what I love in this story? You see, the boy, the younger boy, was coming. And when the father saw him afar off, the father ran to meet him. And uh, I told you, all of us here, you are either of the younger or the older. If you are the younger, as you are coming back, the father will run and meet you. Yeah. And look at the older one. The older one was outside, will not come. And the father came out to meet him there. He loved both of them. You are here, God loves you. Yeah. You are there, God loves you. Yeah. You have not been the best you ought to be. God loves you. And then you've been dutiful and loyal and doing everything well. And God loves you. And I want to tell you, no matter where you have been, where you have gone, where you are coming from, as you are here, I see the love of God before you. And I see that he will forgive your sin. He will save your soul. He will heal your body. He'll give you a miracle. And then that top, both of us, whether you are one or two, you are here or there, you and I, us together, we're going there. Yeah. We're going to get to the top in Jesus' name. Yeah. And now we have number five, assurance, assurance. He said, thou art ever with me. You are ever with me. Thou art ever with me. Assurance. There's assurance in my heart today. The Lord will not reject you. And when you come to the Lord, he will accept you in Jesus' name. Number six, abundance, abundance. All that I have is yours. All that I have is yours. Think of how rich our Heavenly Father is. And he says, everything I have belongs to you. You are going to have something. You will not go empty-handed in Jesus' name. Amen. And then, final verse here. And he said unto him, in verse, uh, that's the last, the last verse, that's chapter 15, verse 32. It was meet that we should make merry 
and be glad for this thy brother was dead and is alive again he was lost but is found what he said before he affirmed again we call that affirmation affirmation and the lord will affirm his blessing in your life today in jesus name before we pray before we pray give me number one anxiety number two did you ever get angry before have you ever been angry before? Yeah. You know, some people, they say, because I was angry before, that means God is looking at me now as an angry boy, angry daughter, angry girl. It means that, you know, there's no miracle for me today. But I remember, in fact, you know, just uh, not too long ago, something, I, I was angry. And because of that, something, but you know, this boy, he was angry. But the father still came to him. He doesn't love your anger, but he loves you. I said, but he loves you. Yeah. And he says, I'm going to forgive that anger. That was your ignorance. That was a shortcoming. I'm going to forgive that and bless you anyhow. And your blessing is near right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number one, anxiety. All your anxiety, all your care. Bring it to the mercy seat and leave, and leave it there. Never a soul that he will not be able to comfort. Because all everything you have, that's an anxiety. The Lord will take it away in Jesus' name. Yeah. Then the accusation, you know, accused the Lord. You never did this for me, never did that for me. Bad attitude. The Lord forgave everything. Forgiveness is waiting for you today. And then after that, assurance, abundance, affirmation. And I come to affirm to you that the blessings of God will overflow in your life in Jesus' name. Now, whether you are represented by the first one or the second one, both of them, the best and everything is available for you. Are you ready now? Yeah. I said, are you ready now? Yeah. Now you close your Bible. This time of prayer, this is your time. This is your time. This is your time. You're going to tell the Lord, if you have gone astray, you've gone away, you've been separated from whom? Separated from the Father. You say, Father, I return. Father, I return. Father, I forgive me. Forgive me. And the Lord will forgive you now. And then he'll give you salvation. He'll give you salvation. And then when he gives you salvation, all the blessings you require, all the blessings you demand, the Lord is going to do it for you. Tell the Lord. It's a day of blessing. It's a day of salvation. It's a day of miracle. It's a day of restoration. And it's coming your way right now. The blessing of the Lord. Praise the Lord, whatever, wherever you've been, whatever you've been, God loves you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, As bad and eyes close, I want to give you a chance to come back. I will arise and go. And say unto my father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. And the forgiveness of the Lord is coming to you the moment you raise up your hand. Where are you? Just raise up your hand. Amen. Amen. Forgiveness. Salvation. Regeneration. A new life. The new birth. God is so loving and merciful. He will forgive you. I'm going to pray for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your love. We thank you because you reject no one. Whether it's like the first child or the second child, you receive everyone. And I pray for all these boys and girls, your own children, your own creatures. Oh Lord, I pray, forgive them in Jesus' name. Let the peace of God come into their heart. Assurance of forgiveness in their heart. And I pray that your salvation will come to them right now in Jesus' name. Let the Spirit of God be a witness in their heart. They are now children of God. And give them grace to now live in the family of God as real children of God in Jesus' name. Confirm your love in their hearts. I thank you because I know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. I believe. I said I believe. I said I believe. I said I believe. I believe you are forgiven. I believe you are saved. You will enjoy that salvation in Jesus' name. Now, the Lord said, all I have is yours. 
He has healing, it's yours. He has deliverance, it's yours. He has miracle, it's yours. And then he has success, and that success is yours. Can we have the miracle now? Who wants the miracle now? Wonderful, wonderful. You are going to have it in Jesus' name. Any sickness in your body, the Lord will take it away now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because of your miracle power. I'm asking, Lord, that to touch every child, every boy, and every girl, remove all the infirmities and all their sicknesses in Jesus' name. I pray that this will be the moment of their miracle. That sickness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. That weakness in the body, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Whatever miracle they need, give them right now. Touch their brain. Touch their mind. Lord, I pray you give them a brighter future in Jesus' name. And I pray that all the resources of heaven, all the miracles of all the power of heaven will come in their lives. And I pray that the affirmation of your word that all you have is theirs. They will realize it from day to day, from week to week, from month to month, year to year in their lives in Jesus' name. Shower your blessings upon everyone. Be healed. Be delivered. Be set free. Receive your miracle. Thank you, Lord, because I know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. I got it. I got it. I got it. Where are you? I got something. God bless every one of you.